this is not an easy business. So we go with it. Uh, eight, eight days, it was more than eight days, but eight days is a number that keeps getting said. It was going to be longer than that. But to eight days to eight months or nine months or 10 months, whatever it is, we're going to do the very best job we can do every single day because that's what the folks that do this type of job have to do. You have to have that mindset because it is not an easy business, like I said. Exactly a week after Starliner made its departure from the ISS and came back to Earth uncrewed, we got to hear from Butch and Sonny. We hadn't heard from the duo since July, so it was nice to see how they're doing and hear from them firsthand. I want to save you guys some time watching the entire press conference, so here are some of the highlights. Of course, top of mind was how did Butch and Sonny feel watching their spacecraft Starliner go back to Earth without them? Hi, Butch and Sonny. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, earlier, you talked about watching Starliner go home. I'm just curious if you can go more into the emotions you were feeling when it ultimately returned safely. You know, was there any disappointment that you weren't on it? To be honest with you, I was so happy it got home with no problems. I was, we were, we, you know, we saw it fly away and then we all got up, the whole crew got up at, you know, whatever, three in the morning um, and we had it up on our, you know, iPads watching it land. And you know, we know all those people who are part of the landing recovery team, the LRT, who are there in the desert and, uh, you know, we were, of course, fingers crossed, as well as Mission Control, we know all of those folks who are bringing it back home, you know, the entry team. Uh, we could hear their voices. We could hear them communicating with each other. We could, we got to see the, the video from some of our aircraft operating directorate folks who are out there doing IR video of uh, the, the chutes opening. All of that was a good sense of relief. And we were actually really, ex we were really excited for our team, our bigger team who got that spacecraft home and we're actually really super proud of them for, for having it land pretty much bullseye there in the desert. It was wonderful that it made it back. And the fact that we weren't on it didn't even come into mind at all. It was never like, oh, we shouldn't. No, not at all. Um, the decision was made. Like I said, we flipped that bit. We go forward with the plan of the day and uh, we hope the best for all aspects of all uh, space flight endeavors. It's clear that their sense of relief that Starliner got home safe without any problems trumped any sort of feeling of missing out or regret that they weren't going home as well. In fact, Butch makes it clear that he really didn't mind not being on it, saying that it didn't cross his mind once, which is pretty crazy. We also learned that, yes, the astronauts did have a say in the situation with how to return home. You know, we did have a say in how all this would turn out. Thankfully, you know, our, our managers and our leaders allowed that, that we would be included and they wanted us included. And for that, we were, we were of course, grateful. Um, ultimately, like I said, though, the decision was made that was made. What, as soon as it was made, we're on board, right? Uh, and it doesn't matter if I agreed or dis disagreed. It doesn't matter. The decision that we are given is what we're going to march to. Again, like I said, because that's 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 not what we do. That's that's who we are. There's a there were a lot of opinions. <laughs> there was a lot of data coming in at different times, and a lot of people trying to digest that data and understand it and take it forward. Um, I think it was really impressive for our leadership and our management to take the time and listen to everybody's opinion and really try to understand where all of that was going. We know from previous press conferences that Boeing was fine with assuming the risk and sending the astronauts home via Starliner, but NASA couldn't agree on this internally, and it sounds like Butch and Sonny sided with NASA. Well, how is life aboard the ISS? Well, for one thing, there are way more people than when they originally arrived back in June. Now, of course, they're trying to take care of their bodies as much as they can, working out every single day. And one of the benefits is that they don't ache in space. So that's pretty nice. But of course, they need to be very mindful of this because they're in for a much more extended stay. And the longer you're in space, the more important it is to take care of your body the best you can, even with a perfect routine space still is hard on the body for long periods of time one thing about space flight is which is wonderful your joints don't ache because there's no pressure on them 
Um, so all the aches and pains you may feel on a just daily basis are not uh, not not uh, prevalent in space, which is actually quite nice. Well, Butch and I also like working out, so that's a that's a good thing because uh, you know when when the mission was shorter, you, I sort of had a small timeline that I was going to really crank it out on the exercise equipment here because you know of course you'd lose bone density and muscle mass. But I, my mind had a transition now, like now to eight months and how I'm going to keep that motivation up. Again, good thing both both of us like to work out. He's an early morning. He's up at like 4.30 in the morning to work out. I'm a little more about 6 a.m. But every day, I mean, it's every day that you have to do that. Every day we're on a, a cardiovascular exercise, either the bike or the treadmill. Every day we're on the advanced resistive exercise device called A-RED, which allows us to do deadlifts and squats and allows us to keep our bone density in our hips and our feet. But that means we're going to have to do this for a little bit longer time. I had seen Frank stay up here for a long time and some other folks and thought about like what I would want to do because I like I like mixing it up a little bit. Keep it keep it going. You don't want to lose it because every day that you don't work out, you're gonna you're gonna lose some some bone density. So um, we have to keep it up, and that's the way of life. I just want to take a quick moment to thank you for supporting my channel. My subscriber count has been growing, and it really blows my mind that people from around the world tune into Alien Space to get their space news. That's a lot of exposure. A lot of people looking at my channel, maybe looking me up because my real name is an Alien Space, and I want to keep that information protected, which is why I use Delete Me. Sometimes people want to know my phone number, where I live, who I'm dating, etc. And I want to keep my personal life off the internet. I'm happy to say I've been able to scrub a lot of that personal information thanks to Delete Me. I've been using the service for the past eight months and when I Google my name now, I'm not terrified by the results. In fact, it's not just specific to me. You probably have a lot of information on the internet about yourself. So just do a quick Google search. Since starting to work with Delete Me in February, they've run four reports and scrubbed multiple listings off of the internet, and they're constantly scanning for new data and data brokers that have my info. Almost all of them had my address and my phone number, and I don't want that stuff on the internet. Sorry. In the August report, over 5,700 listings were reviewed and 38 removed, so here's how it works. Delete Me submits removals from the data brokers where they found my information. This privacy report shows each of the data brokers they've scanned, what they found, and what they're doing to remove my data. After they've submitted each opt-out, their privacy advisors go back and check each source again to make sure my information has been removed. Although all of my listings on the removal lists will disappear within a month, slower data brokers can take weeks to honor requests. And new data brokers are added to Delete Me's lists as they appear, and Delete Me will submit opt-out removals for my personal info to the new ones. This is why a membership can be so beneficial because Delete Me will continue to run reports and do the work for you behind the scenes throughout the year. I personally trust Delete Me and feel more secure knowing that my personal info won't be subject to threats of harassment, identity theft, even stalking, which as a female, got to worry about. You can get 20% off Delete Me US consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash LA20 and use promo code LA20 at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash LA20 code LA20. Thank you to the sponsor of this video, Delete Me. One of the questions that I'm glad was asked is what do they have to say to their families? Back here down on earth, it wasn't too long ago that Butch's daughter shared this TikTok that got millions of views saying that she's sad her Dad is in space. He's not dead, but she did acknowledge that he was stuck up there. Trying times. And this is, you know, my daughter's, I'm, I'm going to miss a, most of her senior year in high school, uh, my youngest daughter. Um, and uh, my oldest daughter is a sophomore at uh, East Texas Baptist University. And uh, I wasn't able to be with her in the, this, during the summer. But um, like, I, like I said earlier, we've tried to teach them the principles that are important and let them understand that uh, trials, however you judge what a trial might be, makes you stronger. And in that respect, um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that, uh, you know, it's played out the way it has. We're here, we're safe. We're in a place that uh, we're both familiar with and doing things that we actually enjoy doing. This is my happy place. I love being up here in space. It's just fun. You know, every day you, you do something that's work, quote unquote, you can do it upside down. You can do it sideways. <laughs> so it adds a little different perspective. Butch was also asked about his faith. He is a religious man. He says that he is grateful for the trials. And he even quoted a verse 
that he is leaning on, and I will read it to you now. The verse is, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And of course, they're not only going to miss the holidays back here on Earth, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, they will also miss the presidential election. So one of the first questions is, are they going to vote from space? And it turns out, yes, you can. I sent down my request for a ballot today, as a matter of fact, uh, and they should get it to us in a couple of weeks. And absolutely, yes, uh, it's a very important uh, role that we all play as citizens is to uh, be included in those elections. And NASA makes it very easy for us to do that. So we're excited about that opportunity. And finally, Sonny says that it's hard to imagine people not getting along on Earth. Um, The more time they spend up there, the more they have exposure to the overview effect. That's that amazing phenomenon that everyone basically shares once they've seen the Earth from space. And that is that there are no borders, that we should be getting along much better here on Earth. And wouldn't it be nice if we could all experience that? I wonder if it would make any difference. It's very peaceful up here a lot of times. Um, There's a lot of work that's going on, but it also gives you a time to be a little introspective, a little change your perspective on a lot of things that we how we do things on Earth. Like it really is difficult for me to imagine people on Earth not getting along together. It's the one planet we have and we should all really be happy that we're there together because that's it, that's our place. So some questions that I still don't have the answers to, how much overtime pay are they getting for this? And who is paying them primarily? Is it NASA or Boeing? I would guess NASA, but I don't know the exact answer. But I am wondering how much extra they get. And as one of my viewers commented, don't worry about their financial situation because we're probably going to see a book at the least and maybe even a documentary following this whole situation. Another question that I have, we know that two astronauts were bumped from the upcoming Crew-9 flight to give the Starliner crew, a ride home in February. So what is going to happen to those two astronauts who now are basically grounded? Um, are they going to be able to fly eventually? And it's I feel very bad for them that they're not going to be able to go. Um, crew 9 is going to be launching September 24th, and they will be bringing SpaceX suits up for Butch and Sunny to fly home on Crew Dragon. One of the other comments that many people have made throughout my coverage of this is why is there not a standard suit that can work throughout Dragon as well as Starliner? And I think that hopefully this is something in the future that we will be able to see. It seems to only make sense to have something that would be universally available so that they don't have to do what they're doing right now, which is to bring two new suits for Butch and Sunny to fly home in Dragon. Well, there are the highlights. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you so much, of course, for tuning into Ellie in Space. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss a future video. And I'll see you in the next one.